Dyson usually gets it right, but with airflow-based gadgets, but for the Dyson Corel, it is a non-airflow-based gadget that they have released. It boasts three big things, less heat, it's cordless, and also it's got flexi plates that's meant to grasp your hair. But at the price of 2,199 ringgit, is Dyson Corel really worth it? Now this is my old straightener. It's a Philips Styler, and I bought it for 200 ringgit. Um, 200 ringgit is what? 10% of the Corel, right, Zach? Hey. I don't know. I like straightening my hair, but I know that every time I swipe some heat through my own, um, it will damage my hair for sure. And let me tell you why. It's because of the heat. <laughs> now I did a little bit of research to find out that heat styling tools will rid your hair of its natural moisture. And since hair is already dead, you can't regrow the hair cells with more product once you damage them. The best I can do with my grass-like ends of my hair is to cut them and then use more precaution next time. I was intrigued because Dyson has promised less heat, less damage, so there's only one way to find out. Since I'm no hair expert, I decided to head to Avant La Mode, which is a hair studio run by hair expert Reina Lum. Here, Reina shed some light on how one can identify damaged hair. The thing about it is that you have to determine whether it's frizzy hair or the hair has been fried. Like, honestly, you can look and see if it's Sometimes hair, it has a certain structure, right? Mm -hmm. And it should have the same structure throughout. If it's really smooth on top, and then you can already see that it goes zigzag that way, then you can tell. Of course, you can also tell by how it feels and everything else. So there's telltale signs. We then went ahead to test Dyson Corral on one half of my hair and my regular generic Philips styler on the other half so we'd have a visual representation of what each styler is doing to my hair. This also gave Reina the opportunity to see what else was good with the Corral and we'll start with the look and feel. Now my Philips styler may be basic looking but it also looks like a kitchen tong. It also has three modes, off, low heat, and high heat. But here's the thing, I can't really tell when it's at the optimum temperature. There isn't like a beep or temperature reading, so I can only make a guesstimation, but it heats up pretty quickly from my own experience. On the other hand, the Corel is very pretty to look at. I mean, it's definitely sleek, mm. look at that. But the moment you touch it, you pick it up, then immediately what hits you is the weight. Now the reason why the Corel weighs a whopping half a kg is because it's got a battery in it. But we'll touch on that later. Of course, the Corel isn't just a pretty face, it's got some premium features too. Unlike my Philips straightener, the Corel has a lock and unlock feature so you can secure your straightener when you're done. It also has a proper screen that you can display battery and temperature information. These small tweaks and quality of life features don't seem like much on paper, but they definitely do add up and give you that premium Dyson experience that matches its premium price. But that's not the main thing that the Dyson Corel is featuring. Their main feature is their flexi plates. Solid plates like my Philips Styler straightens hair with both heat and tension. And they also don't apply heat evenly because the bulk of the strands don't really stay in place. And this means that the strands of hair on either side is missing out on the central tension. That means I'd have to go over that area again, so that means more opportunity for heat damage. High-end straighteners, like the one Reina uses, has ceramic plates too, but they're designed to move from side to side to help even the heat distribution. The Dyson Corel, however, features something called flexi plates. These are manganese copper alloy plates machined to the width of a human hair. Basically, their purpose is to grasp your hair, sort of like hug it, so that it just keeps in place and just snuggles it up and warms it up as you 
as you drag it down. Taking your um, piece of hair and pulling it down is quite easy. There was no real snags or anything like that. I couldn't really feel the difference between the copper plates as opposed to like the normal ceramic plates. Personally, when I use it at home, what I noticed from these two plate materials is that the ceramic one has less friction. The copper plates, especially with the flexing parts, are made to grab onto the hair. So I need to advise you that if you do use a Dyson Corel, do not grasp it so firmly when you want to straighten your hair. You should instead just hold it, I don't know, like gently, like a little baby. Hold it like a little baby. So if it doesn't necessarily work better than conventional straighteners, why did Dyson go to all this trouble to build these sophisticated flexing plates? Apparently, this technology is what allows a Dyson to fulfill its original promise of being less damaging. You see, Dyson claims that these flexing plates mean less heat when styling. I have fine, wavy hair, which means that I don't need that much heat to straighten my hair. Um, I just need the lowest setting of a straightener. For the Dyson, their lowest heat setting is 165 degrees Celsius. For the Philips Styler, a quick Google search tells me that their lowest setting is 160 degrees Celsius. So here's what's weird. Dyson promised me less heat, less damage, and yet it is a full five degrees hotter than my Philips Styler. But reading through more details in their own overview, they say that it's the flexing plates that allow you to achieve the same style with less heat. This refers to the Corel's intelligent heat control feature, not heat itself. Its heat control feature has an integrated sensor system that regulates temperature of the plates a hundred times a second, allowing it to maintain its temperature better. However, Reina tells me that this is nothing new. A lot of really good brands do that as well. They have a self-regulating, even um, if the plates malfunction, they will just automatically stop and they will tell you that there's something wrong. There's an indication, just like a car, there's an indication that something's wrong with it. There are professional hairstyling tools like the HSI Professional Glider that costs 290 ringgit on Shopee that claim to have micro sensors that regulate the heat temperature. Better heat distribution, in theory, lets you straighten your hair without needing to go over the same area. But when I use the Dyson myself, I sometimes still do need to go over the area again. However, with the Philips, I felt that it still uses more heat than the Dyson does. The Philips made my hair steam a little, partly maybe due to some sweat. But when we use the lowest setting for the Corel, you can see that it lets out far less steam. And just generally when I use it, the Philips felt hotter to use compared to the Dyson. That plus how little steam the Dyson lets out almost makes it seem like it does use less heat, but at 165 degrees, it is more than 160 degrees. So what gives? To find out, let's do an experiment. For this test, I'll heat up this piece of bread with the Philips Styler and this piece with the Dyson Corel. I'll use the same heat settings that I use for my own hair. Then I'll clip both of them in for 20 seconds each to see how toasty things turn out. As we can see, the white toast used on the Philips Styler was a little more toasty than the one used for the Corel. The Corel's best feature, in my opinion, is that it can be used without a cord. But here's a reality check. It needs 70 minutes of charging just to get a half hour of battery usage. So for someone like me with very little hair, kind of fine, wavy, it is more than enough time for me to style my hair. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes for me to straighten my entire head. But for people who have curlier hair, longer hair, it might be a problem. Let's say you've run out of battery. You can still do the job with the 360 degree cord plugged in. It's got that satisfying magnetic schlup to it and it helps charge the Corel when you continue styling your hair, but it's not as nice to use corded. However, what we found out 
thanks to a video on the internet is that the Corel actually drains power a lot faster than its cord can charge. But I guess that makes sense since it takes 70 minutes to charge and it only lasts 30 minutes on battery. I can still use a Dyson at low battery if it's corded, but at zero battery, I'll have to wait quite a while for the battery to charge before I can start using it again, even if it's corded. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to charge the battery to 90%, but another additional 30 minutes to get it to 100%. The Corel can also be charged with the stand that it comes in with as well. It even has a flight mode feature, which means that you can safely store it in cabin luggage if you want to travel. And it's got a fancy heat proof case, which you can use to lay the Corel on while you wait for it to beep, or if you're parting your hair. Here are the end results. At first glance, I didn't see a big difference, but Reina pointed out that the side done by my Phillips straightener is straighter and flatter than the one by Dyson. My Phillips straightener certainly did make my hair feel more pressured and heat. And based on the bread test, even though the temperature was supposed to be lower than the Dyson, the Phillips does more heat damage. There was even more steam that came out of the bread than when I used the Corel. Now, let's talk about this bad boy. It is 2,199 ringgit. That is still a heck of a lot that you need to fork out just to get a straightener. The GHD Platinum Plus Hair Styler, which was recommended by Reina, cost about 1,000 ringgit, and that's one of the most expensive ones that I can find that isn't a Dyson. The GHD, for example, has a wishbone hinge plate that has the same idea as the flexing plates, and a nine-foot swivel cord. It's just, you know, corded. There are also plenty of cordless straighteners if you try to Google them, but you need to really read through the reviews and descriptions before you invest in them. For example, the Prytex operation time is 30 to 50 minutes, which is great, but it needs a whopping three hour charge time. Now the Dyson Corel doesn't actually straighten my hair as well as the Philips one, but that's probably where the less heat part comes in. With the regular temperature controls, it doesn't strain my hair as much as the Philips one. But as you can see here with my own hair, it's done by Dyson today and it still makes my hair straight. It just probably wouldn't be as flat than if I were to use my regular Philips styler. The weight is also an issue because I feel like I'm holding a dumbbell when I lift it. I know people in the office think it's not as heavy as I, I, I told, I said that it was. Apparently it's light, but I don't think so. It's heavy, it's half a kg. So who would buy this? It's for people who travel a lot because they would appreciate the cordless aspect of it. But even if you do have the money to buy the Dyson Corel, you still do need to consider things like how curly your hair is and how long your hair is because half an hour of styling time might not be enough for you. As for me, I can't afford a Corel. It's a luxury, but it's a luxury that I was very happy to try out for a bit. And this journey made me realize that I do need to take care of my hair better. I would like to spend a little bit more money on a heat styling tool that has better heat temperature controls because I truly cannot just buy the cheapest item anymore. I think my hair needs more love than that. So what do you think of the Dyson Corel? Would you get it? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you decide on if you want to buy it or not, um, but let me know um, again what you think in the comments. You should also like this video and subscribe to Soya Chinchao and also write uh, anything that you want in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. Okay, until next time, I'm Zamira. Bye-bye.